Hello, today we're going to see how Explore Analytics can display time-based data in a very user-centric format as a calendar of events. Let's get started. I'm going to go to File and create a new view. I'm going to select my ServiceNow data source and select a table. For this example, we're going to look at creating a calendar of change requests. So I'll select Next and call this Calendar of Change Requests Planned. And I'm going to select the chart type because we're going to create a calendar chart. When I click Finish, it's going to ask me what type of chart we'd like to create. And in this case, I'm going to select the calendar. Now before we begin, I'm going to quickly add a filter by selecting Filter Data because I want to look at only changes that are, are of a reasonable size, not long-term changes that might be uh, selected. So I'm going to say Plan Start Date is less than 72 hours before planned end date. Now the way that we're going to define the calendar is using these calendar chart fields in this left hand uh, menu. So the first and most important component is the start time field. So I'm going to select, I can select from any date time field that's on this record or any related records, but in this case we're going to use the plan start. I could have also used when the work starts or when it was opened, but we're going to go with when is the work of this change request planned to begin. And you can see that I already have these, you know, these bars that tell me when those changes are planned. But if I look at this at the week, it's only showing me when it starts. It's not showing me how long this change will go on and, and exactly how much of the day it will take up. So if I switch this back, that's what this end time or duration field is for. I can either select a duration that, tell, that tells me how long this, cha this change will go on, or an end time that will let me know when the change is scheduled to complete. Either way, it will allow me to know how long this change takes up. So if I go, I can select any date, time, or duration field. And in this case, I'm going to use the planned end date. When does it plan to start and when is it planned to end? So now I can see that there are already some changes that are, you know, multiple days. I can see that some of them, you know, take a couple hours, some of them, you know, an hour or less, some of them more. So again, I can already immediately see how long these changes take up as part of the day or part of the week. But right now we're not showing any information about the change. So let's change, let's fix that by using these title and subtitle fields. So the title field and the subtitle field tells us what we're going to put in the label of this change to identify it. So from a change request, I'm going to select, let's say, the number. And for a subtitle, I could use something like the short description, but in this case, what's more important to me is what system or configuration item is it against. So now in each of these boxes, it's going to tell me, you know, what number changes it and what uh, configuration item is it open against. Now, it's also important to me to know which of these changes are high risk. So the color category field is going to color them based on, you know, what type of, you know, what, however I want to categorize it. So in this case, because I said risk, I'm going to select the risk field. So now you can see that the high, very high risk is in red, the moderate is in yellow, you know, the high risks are in orange. So it's very easy for me to immediately see where the high risk changes are uh, during this span of time. Lastly, this area at the bottom that has the category and tooltip fields controls what happens when I hover over. So you see that when I hover over, we have the fields that we've already used, when it starts, when it ends, the number, the configuration item. But if I also wanted to say, well, okay, what's the assignment group associated to this? I can drag that, and now when I hover over, it'll tell me if there's an assignment group assigned. Congratulations, you've created a calendar. Now I'm going to show you some of the interactive controls that are available for the viewers of this report. So anyone who views this calendar report can go to the top left and use these left and right arrows to travel through the time. So if I go back to April or back to March, I can, you know, move my way through and at any point I can go to the today button and it's going to take me to wherever, you know, today is on this calendar. At the top right, I can switch between the month, 
the week and the individual day. So I can, you know, scroll through the time of the day and see, okay, today is Thursday. At 12.30, we're going to have a change. At 3.30, we're going to have a change. And that's what those changes are. The other way that I can go down into the day is from the month view or the week view. If I select the date, it takes me down to that individual day. Now the other interactive controls are common through every type of chart, but they work here just as well. At the bottom we have a legend, that, and by clicking the legend I can show or hide you know, particular uh, categories. So for example, if I only wanted to look at my very high risk changes right now, I can do that. Or I can say, you know, show, hide any of the moderate or the low changes. So now I'm looking at high and very high. And I can of course show all. The blue header at the top is also a user preference. The user can say, you know, do I want the legend to be at the right or at the bottom? Do I want uh, the week to start on a Monday or on a Sunday? Do I want to show or hide the weekend? Do I want to give them a 24 hour time so it says 1531 or a 12 hour time so it says 3.30 p.m.? You know, do I want to show the label or not? Uh, do I want to dim the past? So when I select dim past, all everything that takes place before now is grayed out. But this event that started before now but continues into the future, that's still highlighted because it's still ongoing. It makes it very easy for you to see the difference between what's past and what's present. And then lastly, the user can also say, do I want to see this in whatever our corporate standard time is, so in this case Pacific Standard Time, or do I want to see this in local time, which for me is Eastern Standard Time. So it's automatically, and you'll see that in Pacific Standard Time, this change happens the day before, but in Eastern Standard Time, it actually is it starts on Sunday. So very, very important to know a time zone, it, the data you're looking at. Now we have a couple other interactive controls that are common through other, uh, that you can define for your users that are common from other Explore Analytics uh, reports. I can select an animation. That's going to give the user a drop-down that they can use to switch between, you know, different types of, of changes. So, for example, if I wanted to say, um, show me the uh, priority of the change, and I'll select include all. Now what that gives me is a drop-down here that lets me switch between different priorities. So the viewer can say, show me just the critical priority, just the moderate priority, just the high priority, or show all. Another way you can give your users to slice and dice is to define a drill down path. Now in calendars, the way the drill down paths are defined is using the color category field because that's the way that we're grouping in this report. So I select the color category field in the category and tooltips area and I click the pencil icon. Now I can select to drill down and define drill down hierarchies. So one path I might give is from assignment group to assigned to, for example, and we'll call this assignment path. And another one we'll give is the type of change. So we'll start from the change type. Sorry, not the task type, the change type. And below that, the category. So now that I've defined those drill paths, if I select one of these changes, so for example this ThinkStation change right here, when I click on it, it'll offer me to drill down to assignment group or drill down to type. And if I drill down to type, it's going to break this down not by risk, but now by type. So comprehensive, emergency, or routine. And then I can further drill down into category and it'll break it down by those, you know, the different categories of changes. And then lastly, I can also, at any stage in this, drill through to the details. So if I again select that same change, now I'm going to drill through and it's showing me just that the record, you know, the information of that individual change. And I can select to open that change up in ServiceNow so you can make changes. So again, these can be live reports that users can drill through to the data and actually use as a working, uh, a working dashboard uh, interface. And now it shows me that I'm in the details after a couple of drill downs and I can go back to the, you know, the calendar itself by clicking there. 
Great. So we've now built a very rich interactive chart with a lot of different ways of slicing and dicing and analyzing the data. Now, I want to actually take this a step further using the mashup capabilities of Explore Analytics. What the mashup allows you to do is to combine multiple reports together. And you can do this with any type of chart or, or pivot you know, of the same type, mash them up together. In this case, I want to combine two different calendars. What I have in mind is that I'd like to see what P1 incidents may have occurred in relation to the changes that we have. So I want to know by looking at a calendar, were there P1 incidents that may be related to changes that we rolled out? So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to File and select a new mashup view. I'm going to call this P1 and change requests correlated. And I just need to select from reports I've already created. So one report is the one we just created now. So we'll call this calendar of change requests planned. And the other one I'm going to select is one I've already created called P1 incidents. I made this using, or sorry, P1 calendar. I made this using exactly the same steps uh, that we saw before. So now I'm going to click OK and it's going to mash up those two calendars into one report. So you'll see now that I have these change requests. I also have incidents associated to them. So I can look and see, you know, which incidents took place when and you know which change requests took place, you know, related to them. So now that I have this very powerful report, it's in real time, it's showing me data from multiple different, uh, you know, multiple different tables. It could even be multiple data sources if I wanted to look at, you know, in information from, you know, some other data source. Now I want to share this with my users. So I'm going to publish this. I'm going to go to file and select publish. I want this to be a live report. And I want to publish this to my ServiceNow dashboard. And as I walk through the options and click finish, I can show or hide things or resize. But what I get at the end of all of that is a URL that I can send someone to link directly to this calendar. I get a content block that's now published into ServiceNow and an embed code. So if I wanted to push to embed this inside a, um, you know, a, uh, SharePoint portal or a Google site or something like that, I can just pull that code straight from there. But I want this in ServiceNow, so I'm going to switch over to my ServiceNow environment. I have a problem dashboard, which problem management is using to try and understand issues in our environment. And I'm going to select and say, you know, from the Explore Analytics reports, I want my P1 plus change request correlated calendar. And it previews here and I'm going to put that at the bottom of this. So now I can not only see my key pr problem benchmarks, I can analyze which classes have the most problems and who's helping resolve those problems. But now I can also see if I can un you know, pro proactively discover problems by looking and saying, hey, this is an incident that, a P1 incident that was against this ThinkStation you know, C20. The day before, the ThinkStation C20 had a change to it. So maybe that change request uh, resulted in this incident and maybe that points to an underlying problem that we have. Now, I could have also scheduled this, uh, this calendar to be you know, emailed. I can also publish it to other portals like I mentioned. So for example, in the ServiceNow content management portal, I created a maintenance calendar so that users, you know, end users can come into the ServiceNow portal and see, you know, what are the upcoming outages. So there was a planned maintenance earlier in the week against SAP because of an upgrade. And next week, there's going to be some degradation of our Palm desktop uh, and synchronization software because they're migrating some accounts. So you can really start to think about who needs to see data over time, who would be helped by this user interface, and, and put the calendar where they live. Thank you very much. You now have all the tools that you need in order to be able to create you know, powerful, responsive, interactive calendars. Um, if you need more information, there's uh, full documentation on this feature and any other on our uh, Explore Analytics Wiki user guide. And we're looking forward to see what calendars you create.